Well, welcome to Riding Shotgun with Tupper. We're going for a ride today to talk, let's talk some hoops. Yeah, season finally here. Where's my dog going? <laughs> um, two games, two and oh, two very different games. One, uh, the atmosphere Friday for the Southern game at the State Farm Center was really good. It was, uh, that was a really nice crowd. 14-6 or something like that and uh, people were hopping all night long of course it was one of those games where everything when Illinois game start to finish they won by almost 50 and a lot of people got into it and and um, you know it was it was pretty easy uh, which is fun for the fans now and again um, but uh, the second game against Tennessee Martin uh, not quite the same, although, you know, at halftime it looked fine. It looked fine with just under four minutes to go in the game. I think they were up by 14. And then I think they just mentally went into sort of a prevent defense. I don't think they did it intentionally, but I think they just started, okay, this is over, and let's get to the end. And and uh, they weren't very good against the press. They weren't very good handling the ball. They weren't, they, they missed, LeRon missed a couple shots under the basket that he would normally make at least one of those. And missed a free throw and uh, and Tennessee Martin hit a couple threes and all of a sudden that lead evaporates and they ended up getting two shots to tie it uh, one a, a pretty decent look missed rebound out of bounds they got the ball with 0 0.9 uh, and uh, didn't get a very good look um, a very realistic look to try to tie it and Illinois ended up winning by three so um, you know it's a much harder lesson if you lose it's 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 Winthrop from last year if you lose <laughs> and so instead you can go back and kind of chuckle about it but um, I know in practice that there's plenty of things that they want to correct and there's also plenty of things they just haven't worked much on um, they have done very little uh, with a zone offense you know how, to, how are we going to attack teams that play zone and one thing I've learned in talking to assistant coaches and so forth um, teams will play more zone against Illinois because they're the Illinois spread offense is more difficult to guard man-to-man. Um, -man. And so they'll just default to zone sometimes um, and because they hope that that's just a little bit of an easier look. And, and Illinois, and obviously against the zone, you've got to be able to hit some shots, and they've been poor from three-point distance early on. I don't think that will be the case. I think they were 11 for 16 uh, threes against Vanderbilt when they played them down there and beat them. Um, but they were very poor even opening night. They were 4 of 21, and, and um, they just haven't been hitting there. The looks, looks are okay. They just, they'll, I think they'll be okay there, but they haven't shot well uh, at this point. And, um, you know, there's been some good signs, some good things. Um, really like the way Leron Black has played. You know, he's really good with that mid-range jump shot, and some of them are, are not easy. You know, some of them have a degree of difficulty with them. Um, and Finky uh, has looked good, and, and I think Brad wants him to shoot more. Um, and um, and I think Mark Smith has done some things, too. You realize that he may be 18 years old, but he's got a you know 22-year-old's body. He is really strong, needs to use that to get to the free throw line. Um, Mark Allstork has been uh, inconsistent, uh, played very well in the opening game, not, not as well the second game. Tijon's had too many turnovers, um, that's bothersome, but you know, it's two games, let's let's see how that all goes. Um, and um, and I think, for, uh, I, I keep, every time I look at him, I just say baby Frank. Uh, DeMonte Williams, uh, baby Frank, um, you know, I think they would love for him to shoot the ball a little bit more. I think that he's, he's um, a little reluctant to push things offensively, uh, that's okay if he's not feeling that confident right now. Just do the other things well. But I like I like it when he's on the floor. I think he he gives you a good effort defensively and handles the ball. And um, but boy, the surprise has really been Aaron Jordan, hadn't he? I mean, there's a guy who's I, I mean I had kind of written him off at the end of the season. Look, he hadn't played. Why do people transfer? They transfer because they want opportunity. Uh, they feel like a coach has lost confidence in them and they haven't had a chance. He had 23 points all last season. You know, that's discouraging if you're the kid. And, and um, 
So for a kid like him, a coaching change can be perfect because maybe now you bring in a guy and you get to make a new impression and um, and he's much more receptive to who you are, what you are, and maybe you, maybe you start working a little differently. I don't know, but uh, I just know that he's a different looking kid. He's got 27 points in two games more than he had all last season. He looks confident. He's a he's a physically strong 6'5 wing um, who can do some things and and to be honest when I sat down and figured out okay well this they got this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, I I don't think I had him even penciled into anything, you know. So uh, any if you if you're able to get some genuine and reliable production from Aaron Jordan, man, that that is a big bonus, and uh, probably needed too. You know, I've looked at um, uh, the next couple opponents, DePaul and Marshall. Saw De- DePaul a little bit last night on TV. Um, you know, they're they're bigger athletes. They're gonna have they're better. They're a better team than either of the first two teams. They've got a big guy transfer from Northern Illinois. They've got a six six guard that can really shoot it. It was a D two All American. Um, they'll they'll play at a little slower pace, but that will be an interesting matchup. Dave Lado in his second go as head coach of of the Blue Demons, a team Illinois hasn't played in forever. It used to be really bad blood between those schools not all that long ago. Um, and then Marshall comes in, and Marshall's going to play 100 miles an hour and shoot 43s. Coached by Dan D'Antoni, Mike D'Antoni's brother. Uh, Dan D'Antoni, 70 years old, Italian American. Uh, guy who plays the uh, more of a European system but that's going to be I mean that's going to be bombs away when those guys come out and um, so that's all going to be cool I say I'd say that one of the observations that we along press row are talking about um, is uh, (laughs) Brad Underwood's um, uh, demeanor on the sideline he uh, he talks and he I'm not talking about just to his team although he talks to them and his coaches but when they're not available, he just turns around and starts talking to the radio crew, talks to Dion Thomas, talks to Derek Burson from Sports Information, looks back at us in gestures. He's just, uh, it's very interesting. I've not seen anybody carry on that kind of a dialogue <laughs> with, uh, with the uh, people sitting courtside, but, but uh, and he's funny too. He'll say some things like, uh, you know, the other night, Michael, think he kind of got popped in the face and he was holding his face walking back up the floor they stopped play for a moment and um and he 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 yelled out he's fine he messed up his bun and uh, (laughs) he said you know i just wanted michael to know that i knew that he was all right and and, um so that's been kind of interesting to watch new um something to get used to there and um and uh, so that's been fun anyhow um football um, you know, it was just just disappointing last weekend to learn that Cam Thomas wasn't going to play. They thought that he would be able to pass the concussion protocol by midweek. He did not, and so they went with Jeff George and um, and uh, you know a flurry of turnovers at the end. I think three of Jeff's last six plays were turnovers. Um, they just couldn't get anything going. The first half was, I thought, the first half was really difficult to watch. I mean, it was three plays and a punt, three plays and a punt. Couldn't get the running game going. Um, just, they had nothing going. And uh, down 14 to nothing. They scored the long touchdown on the first play of the uh, of the second half. And, um, you know, I mean, it was just, uh, it's, this is rough watching all these kids and then you factor in all the injuries on top of it, and they've still got a ton of them. Uh, Mikey Dudek's done for the season. You know, I've heard uh, lacerated kidney on him. Um, we haven't seen Rayvon Bonner. has been out since October 21st. Talk about a concussion. That's what that was, and it was a bad one, and they knew it at the time. But they may just keep him out now the rest of the way. I mean, that's just a shame. Um, and, you know, Malik Turner didn't play. Uh, so, you know, the number of weapons available to you is really diminished. It was good to get Trey Watson back. Um, but um, so we'll see. Uh, uh, this week they're at Ohio State, so I honestly, I don't think it matters who plays, but um, I still would like to see Cam Thomas get out there. I think every minute he can get running the offense is good in terms of next year. 
um, and a chance to play at Ohio Stadium in front of 111,000 or whatever they'll have there Saturday is uh, is a pretty good deal. It was also good um, yesterday, Monday, to see Hardy Nickerson back. He missed all of last week, buried his mom on Saturday, same day Illinois played Indiana, didn't get to see the game on TV, uh, didn't see it until he got back Sunday and watched the tape. Um, just obviously a very difficult and rough week for him. His mom died unexpectedly and he had to fly to California and take care of all the arrangements and, and um, you know, that's just, that's tough for anybody. And, and you know, when you're in the middle of a football season and you're as engaged with your kids as he is, um, it was really rough. You could tell in talking to him yesterday, uh, you know, I, I just felt, I felt bad for him. He's a good, he's a good dude. Um, and uh, the other thing is, you know, the NCAA approved um, programs can add a 10th assistant football coach um, starting January the 8th. And Illinois has posted that job, which makes sense because they wanted to get that posting done and get some of the, some of the conversation on that done before the holidays. Um, they'll get a lot of applications in-house and from outside. Uh, Nathan Shieldhouse makes so much sense. You know, when, when um, Tim McGarrigal left to go uh, join the Packers, um, he was the linebackers coach, and it was during a recruiting period, and they needed an extra body, so they petitioned the NCAA, and they allowed them to use Nathan in that role so that they had a full allotment of assistance out on the road. And, and uh, I think they felt like Nathan really did a good job. He's, he's a good guy to have out recruiting because he's played at Illinois. He can speak from the players' perspective. He was, uh, you know, he's the all-time um, total yardage leader at Illinois. He won back-to-back -back bowl games at Illinois. He knows what postseason football at Illinois is about. He beat RG3. Some of that resonates with young kids right now. Um, and um, I know there's other people in-house that are going to apply as well, but uh, Nathan would really make sense. And I, I mean, he's one of my all-time favorite guys. He's just a terrific young guy who gave everything he had um, and probably is really underappreciated in terms of what he contributed. But um, so I'm kind of rooting for him. He's a young guy, married, has a, has a daughter. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm sure from just a financial standpoint, would be uh, terrific for him to get that chance. Plus, I think he's a, I think he'd be a good coach. I, th I think the way he talks to the game, talks the game, and um, uh, communicates it would be good. So we will see what direction they go. But that person kicks in on on January the eighth, and um, I hope it's Nathan. I think that would be great. So um, I guess that's all for today. Um, appreciate it. Um, I was listening to the news this morning. They were talking about last year, and they were talking about in Champaign that they had seven inches of snow last year, which is uh, it's usually about 30. And um, I was just thinking about it in terms of uh, the riding shotguns, because I'm curious to figure out what we're going to do if we wake up some morning and have eight inches of snow on a day when uh, I was going to do this. I don't know. We'll figure out some alternative. Maybe I'll break all the rules and go back out on the road. Who knows? Uh, anyhow, uh, appreciate it. I've gotten some a lot of nice feedback from people who have been watching this, and I um, appreciate that. I really do. That's that's cool. It's it's kind of fun to just drive around and chit chat, and uh, I'll get my dog back on uh, <laughs> on the on the show one of these times. She's running along in front of me today, uh, but she heard through the grapevine that she had been featured and people had commented on her so she got a little of the big head so I'm not putting her on right now <laughs> so uh, okay uh, great have a great weekend uh, Illinois um, host DePaul Friday night they're at Ohio State Saturday back home for Marshall um, on Sunday so another one of those three games two sports three days and uh, should be enough to keep us busy and um, boy I was just <laughs> contemplating the college football playoff thing you know we had some really amazing games last weekend and and uh, I'm sure you all think about this now and again too but it sure would be fun to be involved in that wouldn't it you know we gotta get there man let's get there all right talk to you later bye